Well, it's about 7.30 in the morning. Today is gonna to be a pretty busy day and we're gonna do something new here on the channel. We're gonna vlog heading out to Indianapolis for pacing. So fly out later today, but first I have to teach a full day. So heading into my school, which is right behind me here in Philly, I'm gonna be teaching from eight o'clock in the morning till about three o'clock in the afternoon, then have to head home start getting ready, get my flight, head to Indianapolis. So, All right, so now that I'm in the building and there is a little bit of time before my first class, I wanted to kind of show you the teaching space that I'm in. So really proud of this space because it has been about eight years in the making. And if I say so myself, it's actually a ridiculous drum set studio, especially for a high school grades nine through 12. So I'm gonna move around slowly so you can kind of get a hint at everything that we have going on around here. Uh, when I started at this particular school about eight years ago, we only had two kits or remnants of two kits, components of two kits, and they were actually the kits that are behind me at this point. So this Tama kit right here, the Tama Rockstar, and then of course this Yamaha Stage Custom. And when I say components, I'm talking about a floor tom from one kit, a rack tom from another kit. No bottom heads or hoops. The top heads look like the moon with a bunch of craters and pits and totally beat up. Nothing worked. We were taking tops of cymbal stands and suspending them off of tom mounts. Whatever we could do to just get a hi-hat, a ride cymbal, and at least a rack tom and a floor tom, kick drum and snare drum set up so kids could learn how to play the drum set. Over time, year after year, I would run Donors Choose campaigns where I would slowly get additional components for each one of the kits that were missing. As you can see now, we have two complete kits, two rack toms and a floor tom, kick drum, snare drum, a crash, a ride, and a pair of hi-hats on both of those kits. It made it a whole lot easier to start teaching because I could be on one kit, a student could be on another kit, and that way I could demonstrate I could play along with a student who might not feel comfortable playing by themselves, especially in a room with a bunch of their peers. It helped just kind of progress this whole thing with drum set studies here at school. Over time, we started getting more and more kits, kind of like this breakbeat kit behind me from Ludwig and Questlove. And then also, uh, before the pandemic, we actually had somebody donate this late 80s, early 90s classic maple kit. You can tell it's a classic maple probably can't see the badges anywhere, but those badges are the old school gold badges, which go to tell you that they're maple shells. If they were silver, then they would be birch. Also the hardware itself. I'm guessing these are from the 80s, um, but make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification because at some point I am going to be cleaning these up and restoring them, bringing them back to life. You can see they're pretty beat up at this point. Now, the other thing you're gonna notice these sound panels behind us, Besides the Donors Choose campaigns, I actually applied for a Lowe's Toolbox for Education grant where we received money to start soundproofing a lot of these spaces. So the room that I am currently in is in a row of four different rooms. We are on the fourth floor of this particular building and these rooms were completely bombed out and unused. We could not occupy the spaces, but as the music program was continuing to grow at this particular school, they saw that we needed more than one classroom, especially on the same floor as other classrooms where we're playing music and apparently disrupting everybody around us. The district and the school decided to, since this space was available, they redid it. They bombed it all out. They put up walls, they paint it, they did all that, put electric in here. So that way we had space. The problem we ran into, since this is a drum studio with drum sets, then we were starting to hear, well, we can hear them. And especially the classrooms below us, they could hear us as well. So that Lowe's grant that we received allowed us to get these sound panels and then additional drop ceiling tiles, which allow us to kind of isolate the rooms a bit more. It doesn't solve the problem. You can still hear it, but compared to what it was, it does help tremendously, especially because we're now um, absorbing a lot of the reflections that we were getting off of these walls. We're in a giant square room, and by giant, I mean probably maybe a 15 by 15 room. It's pretty small. You can also see around here we have studio monitors. Uh, there we go. The big thing that I am an advocate for is that when students are learning how to play the drums, especially for the drum set, 
to have them play along to tunes that they enjoy. So let's teach them a basic groove. Cool, you get it down. Here's a tune from your favorite artist that implements that groove. Now you can listen in, listen in to the recordings, using your ears, building up those musicianship skills so you are listening, so you know when you're on beat or when you're not on beat. So the isolation headphones, like you see here, kind of help them hear everything when they're at the kit. But the speakers themselves, when we are learning a new tune, can allow us to listen to this tune, chart it, the tune out so they know the form and the structure. And then we can write all that down here on this whiteboard so they have a reference point. And then of course I can snap a photo, upload it to Google Classroom. They then have an archive of all of the tunes that they learned throughout the school year. Pretty rad. So uh, before we go any further, let's talk about that Questlove kit over here. This thing has been through the ringer. We're talking probably been in this school and set up for at least six years or so at this point. And we're talking played in school on a daily basis, played taken out for performances throughout the city of Philly, everything like that. And it's still standing and still works. The breakbeat kit was made by Questlove for the urban drummer, AKA just needing smaller footprint, something that isn't as big as a traditional kit and easier to transport, easy to get to and from gigs. What we do here in Philly is pretty different. We do have that traditional band, orchestra, choir type situation, but we did start implementing this whole modern band, which I know some educators cringe when they hear that word modern band. But at the end of the day, you're thinking corporate cover band in a school setting. We all know about those school of rock style schools, after school programs, kids go, they're basically in a cover band and they learn rock tunes. We're doing the same exact thing, except that we're doing it in the school setting. And the reason why we are doing it is because, let's take drums for example. A lot of the first called drummers for some of the top artists in the world are from Philly. And a lot of them weren't involved in music activities when they were here in Philly. And that's a big problem because of the fact that they weren't into concert band, orchestra, the traditional classical style of music education. So rather than just say, deal with it or not have them in the program, we're coming up with an alternative. It's not to replace the classical music settings, it's to supplement it. So when you have those types of students who aren't into band, orchestra, or choir, you're giving them an opportunity to be involved in music activities, to learn music in school, but you're actually doing something that they enjoy. Now, some of them do move on to classical with the band and the orchestra and everything else, some of them don't, and that's totally okay. But it, again, it's giving the kids an opportunity to learn music ed in school, and that's the name of the game here. So we actually partnered up with Ludwig and Zildjian and Remo and Vic Firth to basically outsource all 220 schools here in the district with kits. So elementary schools receive the smaller pocket kits, and then the middle school, high schools, some of those magnet performing arts schools, received breakbeat kits. So if you received a breakbeat kit, they got a set of Zildjian S or I series symbols. Um, the pocket kits, it was an all-in-one box. Trying to figure out an alternative, the symbols aren't really the greatest, so we were considering getting sets of I series symbols to go with them to be a little more durable. And uh, we're still in the process of getting all that figured out. Unfortunately, pandemic, all of that kind of stuff kind of just halted everything. But it allows us to get kits from a Philly alum who is a drummer, comes from the neighborhoods that our kids come from, gives them that opportunity to make that connection and see like, hey, you can do this too. And here's all the gear and resources that allow you to do that. So really proud of that whole initiative, especially because at the end of the day, here's a kit, super small, comes with bags and it's small enough that makes it so much easier, especially when you have kids like ours who perform every day at school, who are performing at concerts, who are going to events and playing throughout the entire city, they have a kit ready to go. And this was the original kit that they used here at this school. That's kind of it. That's the rundown of this space. For today, I am teaching two sections of drumline because we don't have enough marching equipment for everybody to be there in one sitting. And then I have two drum set lessons and then I have a cover modern band at the end of the day. I can't actually videotape those lessons because of legal reasons, can't show the kids' faces or anything like that. So I'm gonna leave you here and I'll see you once I'm done teaching. All right, so here at the airport, got home, spent time with the kid and the wife a little bit. Uh, it is a ghost town because obviously, but best part is TSA pre. So far, no line. I'm gonna get through security and get.
get to the gate. Off we go. And just like that, through by far the fastest. It took longer for me to tape walking to the escalator to get the TSA pre than actually getting through. So here at Philly International, have a few hours now before it's time to go, but it's around dinner time, gonna be flying late. So gonna uh, get some food and then uh, off we go. on film it took like maybe two three minutes to get from Philly to Indianapolis usually about a two-hour flight but wasn't too bad actually got here in an hour and a half we took off at 8 got here around 9 30 and the best part is we're staying in Eastern Standard Time so I don't have to worry about time adjustments or anything so now we got to go from the airport to downtown maybe so we need to get a ride share and make our way down almost there all right so we're here, as you could see, in an Airbnb, actually, because one, they're usually more affordable, and two, they are the same distance as hotels, so it's kind of a no-brainer. Plus, pretty rad because I have a kitchenette, so it's awesome because then I can go grocery shopping, get breakfast stuff, everything like that. I don't have to eat out every meal, which is clutch. So tomorrow's pretty laid back. Like I said, go get groceries, chill out, not do anything too crazy. Registration opens tomorrow late in the afternoon to go get badges, do all that kind of stuff. And then PASIC starts on Thursday. So pretty exciting this year. As some of you know, I was appointed a member of the drum set committee for the Percussive Arts Society. Now being part of the drum set committee, I was asked to be a part of a discussion panel that is happening on Friday where we're gonna be discussing what we learned from the pandemic and how it helped us prepare for the future. So if you're coming to PASIC, make sure that you do come and hang. I am also helping out with the drum lessons that are going on at PASIC. So there are two times that you can actually take drum lessons with a amazing group of us, one of which is on Thursday and then the other one's on Saturday. Unfortunately, I'm flying back to Philly on Saturday, so I won't be there for that, but I'll definitely be there for the Thursday time. So make sure that if you want a quick lesson or if you just want to come by and say, hey, just make sure you come by the, the drum set lesson area of PASIC at the convention center and let's hang, let's talk, play drums, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a fun week. Right now it's about 1030 at night, so I'm going to call it a day. Hope you all enjoyed this. If you want to see more content like this on the channel, leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know. So that way I can start doing vlogs like this from time to time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick little vlog. And until next time, see y'all later.